are thinking of the next generation of uh, researchers, then we need to produce responsible citizens. Then our graduates should be able to contribute to economic and social development. Then they should be in the position to produce uh, new knowledge. In the past, the roles of university will include education, then to generate new knowledge through research, then transfer the knowledge generated to the public for the benefit of society. In contemporary world, there are additional roles for the university, including but not limited to fundraising for research projects, evaluation of technology, protection of research results, then commercialization of research results, licensing, negotiation, increased collaboration with industry, technology marketing, entrepreneurship development, then incubation, incubation of spin-up and start-up, then intellectual property training for researchers. As the apex academic institution, the research university is central to the global knowledge economy. It educates leaders, scientists, and scholars who serve society, academia, industry, and the broader economy. It conducts research, and it is the window to international science. Research universities are central to the success of higher education and contribute to the common good. This is from the Hamburg Transnational University Leaders Council, held uh, about six weeks ago in Hamburg, uh, Germany. And to be effective in contemporary society, research universities must maintain their essential roles of teaching, research, personality development, and service to society, but must also constructively engage with and by example provide leadership to the institutions in the post-secondary sector. Because before students come to the university, they will have been to elementary school or secondary school. So the quality of those uh, tiers of education also depend on what goes on in the university itself. Universities must be globally competitive in world-class uh, research and teaching. They should assess and bring to their own country international expertise and talent, and they should also develop uh, global citizens. It is not our remedy to be producing uh, local champions. For most universities, you want to be able to compete with the rest of the world. The vision that you want to be world class, even though in the process you still need to be locally relevant towards uh, meeting societal needs. Then what's, what does it mean? What does it imply for us to be world class? The world class universities are recognized in part for their superior output. The output could be in terms of teaching the graduates, undergraduates, and the postgraduates. Then the research that we carry out in terms of a successful peer review of knowledge, whether it's in terms of articles in journals and books, or patents, royalties, consultancies. We need to produce well-qualified graduates who are in high demand on the labor market. We need to conduct leading edge research published in the recognized outlets in our field. And in the case of science and technology-oriented institutions, they have to contribute to technological innovations through patents and licenses. So our students, our academic staff, then the other researchers, as well as uh, inter internationalization. So the, we need a high concentration of uh, talent. Then we need uh, abundant resources. I think uh, the Vice Chancellor of University of Cape Town alluded to this uh, earlier in the day. In terms of public budget resources, endowment revenues, tuition fees, where applicable, then research gifts. Then uh, the favorable governance is essential in terms of, our, of a supportive regulatory framework. Autonomy, so that the academic staff in particular, they are free to think and uh, research on any topic of their choice. Then academic freedom. Then the leadership team is important because you find instances in which two departments, they have about the same level of resources, but one is doing very well while the other one is uh, regressing. Then there should be a strategic vision. Where do you want to be in the next 10 years? in the next 20 years. Then there should be a culture of uh, excellence. Excellence may not be easy to quantify, but when there is excellence, you feel it. For the University of Ibadan, which is the oldest university in Nigeria, established as a college of uh, University of London in 1947-48, we've had uh, up a lot of ups and downs because it's owned by the federal government. So you observe that the fortunes of the university, they are largely tied to the, what is happening in the national economy. In the earlier days, from 1948 to 1966, the standard was extremely high. There was restricted enrollment. Indeed, some of the students in those days who were asked to withdraw. To start by congratulating the Republic of, the Republic of, of Rwanda uh, for starting a center that is so important. That is the SDG uh, Center for Africa and hosting it, and also for choosing the right partners. Because I saw that you have chosen Japan 
as one of your development partners and you can never go wrong if you choose Japan as your partners. We have experienced them in the, our university, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh, they not only pass the skills to you, but they also help you with the capacity uh, building and also they entrench a very good uh, uh, work ethics uh, in the people whom they interact with. So I'm going to dwell only on two uh, SDG goals. That is uh, goal number four, uh, which is quality education, and a lot has been touched on it, and also on the uh, goal number five, uh, which is uh, gender equity and empowerment of women and girls. So by the end of the million, Millennium Development Goals, 51% of the world's population was female. And imagine uh, we all missed out, Africa missed out in the M MDGs, as you were told. So we really don't want to miss out on the SDGs. In fact, I'm happy that on the SDGs, uh, the universities are now involved and they are on board in all the 17 SDGs. In the Millennium Development Goals, we were left out. And then now, since the universities are on board, we don't want to miss out more than half the population by leaving them out of the SDGs. So that's why I'm going to highlight the importance of women and their role in, in making sure that the SDGs are going to work this time round. And as I said, by the time the uh, the MDGs were ending in the year 2015, you can see that the whole world was more female. The more red, the more women. And you can see in Africa, south of the Sahara, we have very many ladies. I don't know what has happened in the north. Yeah. Next. Uh, the other one is uh, global gender equity. Uh, you, can, you can see there are some places that are so bad for the girl child to stay in. And the worst areas, first of all, let's start with the best areas. The best areas, the more blue, the, more, the better the environment for the girl child and the women to stay in and to do their work. When you go to us the red, you are going to the worst areas. And you can see the best environment is mostly in the developed countries. In fact, the top 10, uh, none of them uh, is in fact in Africa. They have been talking about the ranking of universities. You can now see the ranking of, of the countries. We are not there. But when you go to the worst, the worst areas that you can have a girl child living in, you can see Africa starts to pop up. Chad being the worst, yeah? And uh, it goes on up to Mali, Angola, and the others. And you can see it is uh, uh, just the middle part of Africa that is at the worst. The North Africa is a bit better, and South Africa is slightly better. I have just uh, an inquiry. I saw a tractor, Shuja, being assembled from your university. I wonder whether you are selling them out or distributing them out. would like to share that information. And also the Taifa laptops. How could these universities here share them with you at, at least at uh, some contracts or through MOUs? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other intervention from this side? None. Yeah, okay, sir. The two of you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. My name is Patrick Yaloku. I'm from Crawford University. Uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Lainka and uh, the prof from Kenyatta University. Uh, I want to start by saying that uh, you've done a lot by making your presentations. I've gained a lot from that. But I want to base what I'm, I want to say now on what the President of Rwanda, uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame, told us about 
the formation of a, a formidable triangle of partnership between government, industry, uh, or call it private sector, and academia. Uh, you look at it, I think it rhymes with the, the input process output model provided by Professor Olayinka. I want to start by saying that uh, we have to do that, we have to reinvent the nomenclature university. University was earlier seen as a universal institution, which is seen as the highest level of education provision. Then the colonial masters provided this education. At the time they did provide it, they gave us the kind of education that catered for people who would think that they've arrived after having their university degrees. Uh, they go into administration and they see themselves as leaders without thinking of providing the functional education that is really needed at all levels. I'm not saying that some we're not doing well, but at today, the emphasis is more on utility of. So if you had three children, so that's six years. So if you are 46, the, the, the rank you has been at 40. Because normally you pregnant for nine months, ordinarily, then the next uh, 12 months you are breastfeeding. I get that was what I advised the Alexandra von Umboot, uh, Foundation in Germany. So for every child, they give you a discount of two years. So for men, if it is 40, your only will be 46. So if you are 40 years old for that application, they think for all practical purposes you are just 34. So I think things like that is a, a kind of empowerment. I, I, it's quite reasonable. Um, women, uh, men don't take uh, a maternity, uh, paternity leave, but uh, women have to take a leave. Because with issues like this, then we are going to encourage more uh, girls. Because all of us are also, uh, yes, like you are, I mean, you have sisters or you have mothers or you have wives. So there's no reason under the, uh, under the sun where we, need, where we should discriminate against uh, women. Most of when you even give a, a, a slide to the fact that in 2015, 51% of uh, the world population comprised uh, the female gender. So by empowering females, we are also improving the society. So I think it's all of us, we support it. I mean, if you don't have a daughter, at least you have a mother and you have a wife. I mean, for those of us who are raising the family. So I think it's the only way to go.